Hello, my name is Donna de Blasio. Welcome to the fifth edition of the Moore series presented by FiberLink. Today we will learn about the best practices to enable your employees to securely access corporate resources and corporate email from their iPhones and iPads. In our webinar today, we will talk about embracing the existing iPhone opportunity, then move into some medium-term best practices to implement in your enterprise to ensure corporate policies can be met and data protected. We will show you some of the tools that are available today to manage the devices, both from an end user and IT administrator perspective, as well as provide some links to additional resources. 2010 is the year that businesses are confronting how to fully embrace mobile devices. This also drags the IT team into the picture as users bring their own devices into the enterprise without a proper IT management strategy and operation. iPhones and Droids are being selected over the traditional BlackBerry and Windows mobile devices. I mean, Apple sold 600,000 iPhone 4s the first day they were available and iPads are being sold at a rate of one every three seconds according to Steve Jobs. And this is definitely a good thing. Amazingly enough, the business does benefit. Studies have shown employees work 10 to 20 percent more night and weekend hours when provided a laptop with corporate access. When the same studies come out on smartphone productivity gains, they are likely to surpass the laptop percentages. Have a realistic policy for 2010. Support multiple device platforms and allow personal devices. You are likely already doing this now. With very minimal information, a user can sync an iPhone to your Exchange server. Cost savings could also add up as the employee is covering their own plan. Take stock of your mobile devices by implementing a multi-platform reporting inventory tool. This will help us understand risks regarding to mobile devices and make informed decisions. The solution should also be extended to your help desk and HR departments. Probably the most important, require and enforce basic security precautions. This includes requiring a strong password, password expiration, auto lock, and auto wipe if a specific number of failures. Enforce that local encryption is enabled and have the ability to remote wipe. We will show some of these tools later that will help IT with this. A policy around Bluetooth should also be enforced. Require it to be hidden or non-discoverable. You should start planning for a single console, multi-platform, mobile device management solution. Consider the following. An MDM platform that manages all PC and Mac, form factors, and OS devices integration with your existing reporting inventory tool and a cloud-based solution. Get into the habit of reporting on and discussing mobile device inventory and policy status in your IT operations review. There are tools available now that help with Active Sync and your iPhone, which I will explain in the upcoming slides. These include Outlook Web Access, Microsoft Exchange Active Sync, and the iPhone Configuration Utility. Outlook Web Access offers a number of actions for devices using Active Sync, like removing the device, wiping all data on the device, displaying a recovery password, and retrieving the log file. Both the iPhone and iPad support the remote wipe. This easily allows the user to blow up a device that may have been lost or stolen, or allows the IT admin to take action as well. To do this, simply log into OWA, and under Options on the left, go down to Mobile Devices. Highlight the device you wish to wipe and select Wipe All Data from the device from the top. If you are an IT admin, you then have the ability to browse to a particular user's mailbox after logging in to take the appropriate action for the specified user. Here is the list for supported Exchange Active Sync policies. For example, you are able to enforce a password on the device including parameters around the password. You are able to set an inactivity time before the device locks and requires the password to be entered. With Exchange 2007, you are able to have more complex password settings, including password expiration and password history. You can also now allow or disallow the camera to be used, as well as requiring device encryption. 
Exchange Server 2007 allows you to assign mobile device security policies on a per-user or global basis. These policies are called Exchange Active Sync Mailbox Policies. To create one of these Exchange Active Sync Mailbox Policies in Exchange 2007, from the Exchange Management Console, navigate to Organization Configuration and then Client Access to view any existing policies that apply to mobile devices in your organization. On the right hand side under Actions, Client Access, go to New Exchange Active Sync Mailbox and you will be brought to the next screen. As you can see, there are a number of parameters that you can set within the policy. The first thing you have to do is enter a name for the mobile device security policy that you're creating. As a best practice, it is best to enter a name that describes the policy's purpose. Below the mailbox policy name field are a number of checkboxes that you can use to enable or disable various policy elements. The first checkbox allows you to decide whether or not you want to allow users to use non-provisionable mobile devices. What this means is that the mobile device's security policy that you are creating is not compatible with some older mobile devices. The next checkbox allows you to control whether or not mobile users are allowed to download email attachments to their mobile devices. If your users don't have a legitimate business need for downloading email attachments, you might want to prohibit attachment downloads as an antivirus measure and to conserve bandwidth. The lower section allows you to require a password and then set the parameters for that password. For example, you can set the password length and complexity requirements. You can also control the amount of time that a mobile device can be idle before it locks itself and requires the user to re-enter the password for continued use. Once you have enabled and disabled the mobile device security policy options to your liking, click the new button and the active sync mailbox will be created. When the creation completes, click the finish button to exit the wizard. The mobile device security policy you just created will now be listed in the organization configuration in the client access container. To assign the mobile device security policy to a mailbox from the Exchange Management Console, navigate through the console tree to the Recipient Configuration Mailbox to view a list of all the users in your organization. Right-click on the user whom you want to assign the policy and select Properties. Go to the Mailbox Features tab. This tab is used to enable or disable Exchange Active Sync, but also contains a Properties button. Select Exchange Active Sync from the list and click the Properties button above it to display the Exchange Active Sync Properties dialog box. Click the Browse button and select the policy that you would like to apply. Click OK to complete the process. After the apply of the policy, it can take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes for the device to receive the policy. Once that occurs, an indication box will appear on the device stating that a passcode policy has been applied and will not download any data until a new passcode is set. The user is then prompted to enter in a passcode twice for verification and then hit OK. If you want to apply the same policy for everyone, simply make the policy the default policy. The iPhone configuration utility lets you easily create, encrypt, and install configuration profiles, track and install provisioning profiles, and authorize applications as well as capture device information including console logs. You can download this from Apple's website along with documentation for business integration. When a device is connected, you can use the iPhone configuration utility to install configuration profiles and applications on the device. The content of the main section of the window changes as you select items in the sidebar. The sidebar displays the library which contains the following categories. Devices, which shows a list of iPhone and iPod Touch devices that have been connected to your computer. Application lists, which list your applications that are available to install on devices attached to your computer. Provisioning profiles, which list profiles that permit the use of the device for iPhone OS development as authorized by Apple Developer Connection. Configuration profiles, which list the configuration profiles you've previously created and lets you edit the information you entered or create a new configuration that you can send to a user or install on a connected device. 
Now I will go over a few of the options that are available for setting up a configuration profile. Earlier this year, Google announced support for mobile device security policies in Google Apps. This will help administrators manage iPhone, Nokia, and Windows mobile devices from the Google Apps control panel. This week, they announced new mobile device management options for Google Apps administrators. Starting this week, these policies will be available to all Google Apps Premier and Education customers. Also, stay tuned for an Android-focused webinar that I will be doing in the near future. Thank you.